Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, we got topic number 1.4, State Building in the Americas, in the re yellow review packet. Um, this is our next phase along the way. Make sure um, you're writing down the notes. Uh, I've got it set up so that you should be able to just follow right along and fill in your packets as you go. So without further ado, um, as you're looking at this beautiful picture of, I believe, Chichen Itza, which was one of the last of the great Maya capitals um, and the great pyramid that is there. All right, so let's move forward here. Early North America. All right, so um, this is, we're talking, you know, year 1000, uh, maybe earlier before. Um, three major cultures crop up in um, North America, one more towards the north in the Midwest called the Mississippian culture, and then two in the Southwest that are fairly interrelated, the Chaco Canyon uh, civilization and then Mesa Verde. Um, Mississippian will do first. Government and society, they were what was called mound builders, and you can see an example of that in the background. Um, and these sites actually show up all over the Midwest, the most, um, because they were a large community held together by trade. And, and my understanding is it went as far east as into uh, western Pennsylvania, um, all along the Ohio River, down through the Mississippi, as far south as Louisiana. Um, you have these. Uh, remnants of these or these archaeological finds. The biggest one of these is a place called Cahokia, which was really the whole center of this network. Uh, Cahokia is located, I believe, in southwestern Illinois, so fairly near the Mississippi, where the Mississippi and Ohio River meet. Um, and it was a really stratified society. There are uh, evidence that there was a clear elite and rulers. Um, and um, to, to build the things that they built, they obviously had a very well-organized society. Um, we don't know a ton more about that because they didn't leave a lot of written uh, information. Now, the decline of this civilization happens somewhere in this time frame of 1200 to 1450, um, and the most like likely cause of this is what was known as the Little Ice Age. Um, this was at a period uh, in world history where the planet cooled, and it could be for a variety of reasons. There's some evidence of volcanic activity um, and a whole bunch of other things that basically were... Uh, a lot of the area around the North Atlantic, more than anything, was affected by this, where um, it uh, it cooled the planet down significantly for a period of years, leading to a whole lot of bad harvests. Um, and it may have facilitated the Black Death and some other things, uh, That the, the effect of it, because of the amount of people that were um, weakened by um, the lack of food. Um, as I said below here, you got poor harvests in the Mississippian area, you got drought, um, and also possibly overhunting may have caused people to disperse, to move away from there. This is a very similar circumstance to what happened with the Maya. We don't really know, we can only guess. Okay, we move on to Chaco Canyon, um, centered in what is modern day New Mexico. It's what's also known as the Pueblo culture. There were roughly 150 settlements linked together by an extensive road system. And it's really kind of interesting that they had this road system because they did not have, um, as I hope you remember, beasts of burden, things like uh, horses or wagons or anything like that. Most of the, the trade was carried on by foot, uh, but they had a pretty extensive road system. And by the 11th century, uh, Chaco is really the center of a turquoise trade that goes as far south as Mesoamerica, even into um, what we become to known as the Aztec or the Mayan regions. Um, pretty sure that the decline was caused by drought, um, Mesa Verde, very similar situation. It was also a Pueblo culture uh, centered on the Four Corners region of the Southwest where um, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado meet. Um, and that many of the, the things that went on there were very similar to Chaco. Okay, the Mayans, somebody you're probably somewhat familiar with. Uh, I'm sure you did some things with these guys last year. Um, and we just got some kind of our spice chart for them here. Uh, based on agriculture society, um, it was a uh, stratified society with leaders on the top, uh, down through the priests, and eventually down to the bottom with the farmers and the peasants. Um, on the politics side, um, the leaders claimed divine authority, but they weren't able to really create any kind of empire. There was never any really one person who ruled over the entire 
uh, Mayan region. It was really more of a fragmented city-state, similar to maybe Greece. Um, might be our easiest example. Um, the interaction with the environment, as we saw in the opening slide, they built pyramids um, all over the, what is known as the Yucatan Peninsula, that area in the background that is uh, shaded in pink um, is, is the, part, the, the part that sticks out is the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, and many of these are still being found because as the Mayans left the area, um, the jungle just kind of took over and uh, covered up there. So there may be more Mayan civilizations or Mayan cities to be found. Um, one of the things I know they did do was um, they did a lot with water management uh, because the, the, period, the, the area is honeycombed with um, underground rivers um, and many of them got in the way so they rerouted them to, for better loot. Culture side, this is where the Mayans probably get their most famous. They're a technological innovation. Um, the creation of their pyramids um, without beasts of burden or anything else, mechanical things. The concept of zero, which developed um, also in India, and these are uh, um, it's totally independent of each other. Um, and I'll get into more into the concept of zero in a second. Um, obviously, just the stonework and the carvings and the buildings and the monuments that they were able to put together. They were a polytheistic society with multiple gods, and sometimes the gods were different from city to city. Um, and there was some semblance, uh, some performance of human sacrifice, though not on the scale of the Aztecs. Um, on the economic side, it was, again, an agriculture-based community, but there was trade between the city-states, um, most of it conducted by foot or horse-drawn or uh, human-drawn carts. Um, technological innovation is probably where the Mayas shine the most. Um, they created and used paper um, at the same time that it was developed in other parts of the world, again, independently. The Mayan calendar, which you probably are familiar with if you remember the whole 2012 situation where it was going to run out, um, and there was an extremely accurate calendar along with that astronomy and then the idea of a concept of zero and if you think about a number system without a concept of zero uh, there's nothing there to there's nothing in there to like as a placeholder for when there is nothing or like we use 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and the adding on the numbers um, otherwise you've got to have symbols for every possible numerical combination um, on that so that's the mayas uh, moving on to the Aztecs, who aren't really the descendants of the Mayans, though there is a lot of s similarities. Um, the Aztecs come in a good deal later, uh, a couple hundred years after the Mayans disappear. Um, and they're really kind of uh, almost a parasitical kind of culture because they come in and they are conquerors and they take over um, a lot of territories and just overpower everybody because they're very warlike. Um, it is a hierarchical um, society. The emperor and the priests are on top and down the way everything else goes. They do have slavery. Uh, they have this concept called general gender parallelism, which is also they share with the Incas, as we'll see in a moment. Um, and it's basically that each gender had specific roles. Um, and these roles were equally important, but they were also separate. It was almost like two societies running side by side. The women did one set of jobs. The men did another set of jobs. And they really wasn't a lot of mixing other than the normal male and female mixing. But there wasn't people from each gender doing different jobs. It was that was what the women do. This is what the men do. And um, never the two shall meet. Uh, the Aztec Empire is really a theocracy. Okay, the emperor is not only the emperor, the, the, the leader of the people, he is also the chief priest of their whole religion. Um, it is a tribute-based system. They, they conquered people, and then they required them to pay tribute, whether in goods or money, um, or more likely in the form of bodies for human sacrifice. Um, this is what the Aztec society is really built on. And to, in my mind, they're one of the classic, the best example of how a tribute system worked if you're struggling with getting your arms around that. Okay, they force people to either give them uh, some sort of goods or in the case of the Aztecs, buy people to be sacrificed to the Aztec gods. Um, that said, if you paid your tribute, you, they allowed conquered people to rule themselves as long as the tribute was paid. This is very similar to the way the Mongols set up their empire later, as we'll see. Um, and But on top of that, they did station warriors around the provinces to keep everybody in control. 
and the local noble or land, uh, the, the wealthy landowner, maybe governor, really owned all the land. Interaction with the environment, the, the Aztecs, like the Mayas, were uh, builders. Um, they had the Chinampas, which if you can remember from previous times when we've talked about the Aztecs, where the Chinampas were the floating gardens, floating islands, that they man-made islands that they built in the lake that their city was centered in um, to grow food on. They built pyramids, as you can see um, in the background. They also built aqueducts like the Romans to bring water from the surrounding countryside to um, their capital city. They had a huge pantheon of deities, of gods, which means all sorts of them. The chief god is the sun god, Quetzalcoatl, um, and they practiced human sacrifice with a vengeance. They were an extremely bloodthirsty culture. Okay, on the economic side, and I'm sorry if this isn't the greatest, I uh, should have had probably a different color here. Uh, vast marketplaces reflect the do uh, commercial culture. Um, they had trade going across the empire, and everything was sold in these marketplaces that cropped up throughout. Um, the technological infinite innovation, we already talked about the Chinampas and the aqueducts. Um, they had a very complex calendar uh, designed around all these holy days of taking care of and making sure that the sun god was properly nourished with blood. Um, they worked in precious metals, so they did not work in iron because there was no iron available. They wove cloth, and they developed a whole picture writing system. Why did the Aztecs go away? Well, the Spanish showed up. Um, and similar today, they brought an epidemic with them. And uh, the disease weak, so weak in the Aztecs that they were unable to um, deal with that decline. All right, uh, a little bit more on the Aztecs. Uh, there was a group in the Aztecs called the Pashteca. Um, and these are the professional merchants who undertook large-scale trading expeditions both within and beyond the bounds of the empire. Their wealth allowed them to rise in society and become magnets of the land. Um, they were really the guys who ran those marketplaces um, for the Aztecs. Okay, lastly but not least is the Incas. Um, the, on the society side, the Inca owns everything. The Inca is the emperor, um, and he owns everything, including the people. They also practiced the general parallelism of the Aztecs. Um, they divided their empire into four provinces with regional governments. Uh, they practiced what was known as the Mita system, which was basically a mandatory service to the Inc Inca, usually in the form of public works, um, building things, whether it was roads or bridges or other stuff. Um, they built schools. It was a very bureaucratic um, empire. They, they were in your face. The Inca is an absolute ruler. Um, they practiced terrace farming. They built a lot of roads, um, including the city of Machu Picchu, which you see behind you, uh, the screen here. Um, on the cultural side, they practiced ancestor veneration. Um, they did some human, human sacrifice. Um, they, the sun god is their major god, uh, but they're nowhere near as bloodthirsty as the Aztecs. There really wasn't an enforced religion like there was with the Aztecs. You could pretty much worship your local gods. Um, on the economic side, there isn't a lot of trade, and what trade there is is state-run. Um, again, as I said, this is a very in intrusive empire, um, and it's agricultural based and the roads that they built facilitated the movement of goods because everything was owned by the Inca people they transferred the food around that way um, technological innovation was the terrace farming they built terraces um, in the mountainsides to create not only um, to keep the, the, the crops from running off in the rain but also they created these economic or uh, these agricultural zones uh, where they could simulate different zones and grow different things. They were extensive road builders. They used the Kipo, um, which is on the background here, which was a, um, a very complex record-keeping system but using a rope with knots in it. Uh, they practiced medicine, and eventually, just like the Aztecs, they were conquered by the Spanish um, due to the weakened state of disease that the Spaniards brought with them. Okay, so that's what you need to know. Uh, the background picture is simply a Pueblo. Sorry for the length of this one. I got a little windy. I apologize.